Here are some pointers on using the new Surface Hatch feature in Vectorworks 2015. Simply put, this new feature is a hatch definition tied to the rendering texture. So in this image, the lines of both wood and metal siding come from a hatch definition, not a RenderWorks image. This will fill a big hole in the workflow for many people. Previously, crisp line drawings that still showed materials needed a workaround. 2D hatching in the annotation space of viewports. An inconvenient process that needed updating if the design changes. Now, this is automated. The same textures that show materials in OpenGL or RenderWorks display hatches in hidden line mode. One of the interesting implications of this is that since surface hatching is a RenderWorks feature, RenderWorks has just become part of the construction drawing workflow, not just a presentation feature that might be used on one or two workstations in your office. The difference that this makes, in my opinion, is that it will be well worth it to own RenderWorks, even if the majority of your time will be spent on construction drawings. Here's an earlier version of the same file we were just looking at. Some textures already have hatches assigned, but the building siding and the metal roof do not. Over here are some of the provided RenderWorks libraries. In 2015, you'll see that most of the new textures have surface hatches already added. You'll see the phrase surface hatch in the texture name. Assuming you're now updating to Vectorworks 2015, here's some info on how to adapt your current projects. You could either replace textures in your file with updated ones from 2015 or add new hatches to the existing texture definitions. In our experience so far, we find it's easier to add hatch definitions to the existing texture. So let's look first at doing that. Edit the texture name. This button is the new addition to the texture interface. Pick one of the hatches in the file. You need to have the hatches available before you start, so import or create, or create some hatch definitions. If you need to study up a little bit on creating hatches, this would be a good time to do so, as you'll need that knowledge to make good use of this feature. The only catch you could fall into here is that you need to pick a hatch definition that's defined in world units. I'll choose one here that's incorrect to show you what'll happen. Hatches defined with page units may not be aligned to a texture. So I can't line up the lines of the siding with the hatch definition if I've used a page unit hatch. These page unit hatch are intended to be printed at a constant size and not grow or shrink according to the scale of the drawing. So we'll fix that up. And then once you've started to set up the hatch, you need to scale it exactly to the drawing. You want to do this as closely as possible. Once that done, is done, the hatch automatically appears in your hidden line rendering. If it still doesn't show up, check line render options. Display surface hatches is an option you can turn on or off.
This texture has been provided in the RenderWorks library for a few versions of Vectorworks. In 2015, it's just gained a slightly different name to denote the addition of the surface hatch. If I import it into my file, I'll still need to individually replace each instance of it. This is going to be a time-consuming and fussy process, even in a small file like this, much worse in a larger file. What I'm going to do instead is copy the name. delete it from my file and change the old texture to the new name. What this is going to do for me, I'll just go back and find the texture in my texture library. and I'll import it again. This time, instead of getting a second texture with a similar but not quite the same name, it's exactly the same and I have the choice to replace the texture in the current document. This is exactly what I want. It'll do it all in one step and I won't have to do any remapping if I've done custom mapping of any of the texture instances. Let's look at that in hidden line. Now I have the texture on the roof as well. At this side of the building, if you look closely, you can see that there's a mismatch in the mapping of the texture from one floor to the other. With OpenGL rendering, it isn't too noticeable. But with hidden line rendering, it sticks out like a sore thumb. For many of the provided wall styles in Vectorworks, this will take care of itself nicely, and you'll see a seamless surface from one story to the next. But in the course of designing and pushing and pulling walls around, you'll almost certainly get some of this in your model, both in walls and in roof materials, such as this metal roofing that you'll want to run continuously over the ridge. Use the texture mapping tool select the wall and change the mapping type to plane. By choosing this mode you can get a simplified view. And now what you want to do is first make sure it's placed along the wall and then simply snap it to a point that the two walls have in common. Now it aligns seamlessly. After you've got surface hatches attached to all of the rendering textures and you've fixed up any small mapping errors, you should have a pretty good hidden line view of your model. Here's a couple of ways you might be able to use it. For simple clean line elevations, It's a straightforward hidden line rendering, simply with surface hatches turned on. For this rendering view, it shows off the capabilities of uh, surface hatches along with RenderWorks rendering types quite well. Here's how the render settings are put together. The background render is a custom render works with anti-aliasing and shadows on. 
with textures on but colors off. So we have some of the texture of the wood, but simply not the, the, the color picture of it. For the foreground render settings, it's hidden line with surface hatches on and a very subtle default sketch style that'll have just a tiny bit of overstrike, give it a little bit of softness. We'll let that re-render. And there it is.